what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually testing out a natural stone today. I've never used this. This is actually the Amakusa. I think it's uh, 1200 grit or 1000 grit. And so it's the first time I'm using a natural stone. So I figured, you know what? Let's just play around while I'm restoring this knife, try something different. So the stone is very interesting. I find that the stone is much slower than what I'm used to using a Chorsera or even a Cerax or a Debato. Um, it's definitely on the slow side in terms of speed. It's very lumpy when I first pulled it out. I didn't flatten the stone at all because I want to see how well it sharpened as it is. I don't only, I, I don't only, I don't only, I definitely don't recommend you using the stone out of the box as it is unless you are a little bit more experienced. I would say that this stone here definitely can probably use a little bit of flattening when you first pull it out. Uh, if you don't want to flatten the stone with anything expensive, you can use sandpaper. Uh, put the sandpaper on the on a, you know on a really nice flat surface and then put the stone on top of that and grind it down that way. 220 grit is what I usually use for wetting, uh, flattening wet stones. You can also use uh, drywall mesh paper which I'll leave linked in the video description and if I've got that video up I will leave a video link to where you can see all budgets for flattening wet stones. Uh, in terms of overall feel, it has a very interesting feel. It's very gritty, definitely more gritty than I'm used to on a typical synthetic 1000 grit whetstone. It has a lot of pebbles in it that you can definitely hear. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can hear that during the sharpening. Um, you can definitely feel it and see it. If you look at the surface of this whetstone here, there are just lots of, uh, I would call it debris or impurities on the cutting surface. So it's very interesting. It's also very soft. It was developing a lot of slur during the sharpening and so for me I don't really like slur because it feels like it slows me down and also um, it takes away my ability especially when slur loads up on your fingertips it makes it takes away my ability to feel for the edge and feel my burr and so slur a lot of folks uh, a lot of knife people love slur um, I personally don't love slur I think it's fine but I feel like it slows me down and it takes away my ability to feel it's definitely softer and slower cutting than any synthetic whetstone I've used in the 1000 grit category. I understand why people love natural whetstones. Now, this is only my very first one that I'm using on my channel. I have, I have others that I will be doing reviews on, but I can see the allure of a natural whetstone. It feels like you're using that, something that's kind of ancient and something that's very, you know, that it has some sort of uh, connection to the earth at some point because it comes directly from a mountainside, which is cool when you think about it that they are able to cut out a piece of rock from a mountainside and you can sharpen on it so there is that allure I understand that but from a raw performance standpoint for I think that I bought this some for about $45 plus shipping so all in all it was under $60 for 60 bucks on a synthetic whetstone there are a variety of whetstones I would definitely recommend over something like this the Cerex 1000 is definitely up there for an extra $10, you can buy the Chorsera 800, which is my favorite splash and go whetstone of all time. And so, you know, for this budget, there are better, better performing synthetic whetstones out there. But I will have to say that it is very fun to use, and this is also my very first time using it. So I will flatten the stone out and just give it a fair try again. I'll try it on a different knife, uh, on some different knives, and see how the finish looks. Because the finish on this knife, is interesting because it's it's a very matte finish but it also is not a very even finish on the cutting edge it gives your knife a very interesting aesthetic at the cutting edge so I, I do see the allure of it but in terms of raw performance for those who are wondering it will not outperform a really high quality or decent quality synthetic whetstone so that's my conclusion i'm sticking with it i will post a link to this exact stone in the video description if you guys want to just check it out on your own time if you guys want to check out my straps i make my own homemade straps here right here in my shop. I will leave a link to those as well. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see other whetstones reviewed and if you have any questions about whetstones in general, please leave them in the comments. I'll read all my comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Well, thank you guys for being here and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Okay, so <laughs> I've somewhat sorted everything out and uh, this is what I've got right now. Uh, this pile right here, these are the Shogun series from Dal Strong. This pile right here, there's about 50 knives just from this little pile. Average price in this range is around 50 to $120 per knife. There's about uh, 20 knives in this pile with an average price of around 30 to $50, I think, or maybe a little bit higher. This pile here, this is the Gladiator, small and large pile. We've got about another 40, 45 knives. Average price of $30 to $50. And then uh, we have another 
dozen knives over here from the Phantom series. This is a Phantom series. Uh, average price is I think $40 to $70. And there's about a dozen of them here. And then we got Omega. Okay, we've got two Omega knives from Dow Strong. These have a price tag of, I wanna say 130. So two brand new ones here going out. <laughs> uh, and then I've got another three knives here that I don't really know what they are yet, but I think they're like $70 knives. Uh, so that's it for this giveaway. That's the pile that we're looking at. Again, we're looking at 100 plus knives right now. And I've got another box on the other side. Uh, of Nexus knives, so they'll be going out. And then up there, I've got some box sets that need to go as well. So yeah, doing some serious house cleaning right now and uh, making room for some more stuff that's coming in very soon.